Fellow Toastmasters, honored guests. We're going to talk again a little more about guitars. It's a strong interest area for me, so it, it comes natural. Uh, I, I touched on it a little bit in the icebreaker, so we'll just go a little bit more in, into that subject matter. Uh, for the most part, guitars wood and steel. Simple, but really like not so simple. There's a wide range of quality that you can get into. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm, I participate in the Acoustic Guitar Forum on, on the internet, and on that forum, uh, it's a community of people, and I, I find it's a fairly affluent community, probably 45 to 65 years old, and people that have, you know, clearly have the funds and resources to, to pursue the hobby. Uh, what's interesting is that probably like these recreational players, uh, they don't really need the fancy guitars, you know, like the musicality part. Uh, a good musician can pick up a mediocre guitar and make it sound amazing. A working musician who's playing in guitar in bars and things, or, or gigging, a gigging musician, he's not really going to have like really fancy stuff. It gets beat. It's you know, his guitar's going to get beat up on the road. So the range of guitars I'm talking about, uh, for the most part. You know, they might sell new for $8,000. Uh, the first guy that, that, you know, the first guy that sells, you know, the guy who buys it new is going to take the hit. But, like, once that first hit kind of goes by, these guitars fairly, fairly well stabilize. And so, like, for $4,000, uh, you know, you get a really nice guitar. You can play it for a couple of years. You can experience the nuances of, of the differences and the different brands. And then you can sell it for about the same kind of money. So, compared to a car, or, or you know, like, another reason why I like I, I kind of like guitars is that, like, I like cars too. Uh, you know, but if I if I really, you know, like I like BMWs, I might want a Porsche, I want this or that. But those those cars are out of my realm. It's just not approachable. You know, like maybe I could buy one in my lifetime, but I'm certainly not going to be able to trade in and out. And as you drive them, you're going to lose value. So you're going to have to be pretty, um, really affluent to, to kind of play in those realms. Getting, in, getting involved with guitars can induce gas. <laughs> if you don't know what gas is, it's called gear acquisition, for, gear acquisition syndrome. Gas can be expressed as a mathematical formula, as in the number of guitars you need is equal to the number of guitars you have plus one. <laughs> Each guitar has its own feel. It's, it's an organic experience. Uh, your hands touch the guitar, and, and I'm talking about acoustic guitars. Uh, you know, you don't really plug them in, but you know, you have your hands on them. You know, typically you're sitting down or something, but you, you feel them against your chest. And as, as you play, uh, you'll hear the sound. There's different types of sounds. And, you know, you kind of feel the rumble and, you know, like you, you do different things with your fingers and hands and you just get a different response and, and you feel. And, and that part is just really fun. Now, each guitar kind of has a different feel. Some guitars, are, you know, are very light and take an easy touch, and that's, you know, a term they use for that is responsive. Other guitars take a little more of a firm hand to play, but they're usually louder and more powerful, you know, so you, you kind of can run this, you know, like, they call it noodling, you know, you might be noodling in a soft kind of tone, or you might, you might just want to be kind of playing it fairly aggressively. Uh, I play with my fingers, uh, there's other, you know, there's, I play with my fingers. There's different ways to play with your fingers. You can play with your, uh, the flesh of your fingers, which is what I do. There's people who play with nails. Uh, many guitarists go to nail salons just so that they can get the right nails. Uh, James Taylor, for instance, he plays with nails. And there's actually a YouTube video up there that shows him like all the work that he does to make sure that the nail is exactly you know what he's looking for. And, it would be very familiar to, I'm sure, you people who go to <laughs> nail salons and things like that. So let's talk about how guitars are built, or who builds guitars. There's different types. There's, there's factory guitars, there's boutiques, and there's craftsmen called luthiers who build them. Those are basically solo builders. Factory guitars are Martin, 
Gibson, Taylor, Eastman, and more. Uh, boutiques, Santa Cruz, Hudson Dalton. Uh, a boutique is like, say, a small shop of, say, 10 people. Martin guitars are the gold standard of the factory guitar. Uh, it's a family, to this day, it's family owned and operated, and they've been operating since 1833. Uh, their guitars, old ones, vintage, are essentially like the holy grail of collectibles and investors. And, and in some ways, many of these guitars have been lost to the investor side of the community. Uh, to give you an example, a Martin, it, you know, classic words are Martin, a pre-war Martin D45. Uh, there were 91 made between 1933 and 1944. Uh, these guitars today sell for anywhere from $250,000 to $350,000 if you can get even find them. Uh, the first one that was built was actually for Gene Autry. So, and that's actually still out there in his, his museum. Luthiers kind of intrigued me. Uh, these are people who are, who are craftsmen. Uh, they've kind of gotten off the, uh, uh, the mainstream, you know, in terms of like making money, big income, things like that. There's a story about a luthier who won the lottery. When people asked the luthier what he was going to do with the money, luthier stepped back and thought about it for a bit. He came back and said, "I'm going to I'm going to keep building guitars until the money runs out." <laughs> that's that's pretty fascinating to me. <laughs> uh, one of the more inter one of the more inter interesting guitars, or one of the more interesting luthiers, is Wayne Henderson out of West Virginia. Uh, he's really a good old boy, a former postal worker, and there was a book where they they essentially it was kind of a fanboy uh, publication about him about him, but he's got a huge waiting list, like years and years and years, but he'll, he really only wants to build guitars for his friends. So if you show up with a big checkbook and think money talks, you're not really going to get a guitar out of Wayne Henderson. So in closing, for the weekend, there's a guitar show in Woodstock, New York this weekend. Uh, it's a nice drive, uh, the leaves are changing, and uh, you know, it's something fun, fun to do, and you can kind of experience it. They have basically free live music on the side, and you can see many of these new fears. There's just one other thing that, that you know, like I, in closing, like if, if you're a recreational and studio, pseudo collector as I am, as you get older, you'll also learn a recreational lament. Lord, when I die, Please help my spouse sell my gear for what it's worth, and not what I told her I paid for it. <laughs>